This episode is sponsored by Honey Badger. In addition to Honey Badger's great error monitoring service, they also have an uptime monitoring for web developers. And Honey Badger has recently shipped an update that allows for public status pages that can help communicate outages to your customers. In addition to your uptime monitoring, Honey Badger now monitors your SSL certificates. And Honey Badger now has actions which will allow you to do bulk updates to all your errors, or you can set defaults for incoming errors. In this episode, we're going to talk about file uploads and specifically around a Ruby on Rails application uploading files from a user input to some kind of cloud storage. And in the past, really your main option was to use the Amazon AWS S3 to store the files. And that was a great solution for many years. And they were one of the only solutions. However, in this episode, we're going to look at three different alternatives. We have Wasabi, Backblaze B2 Storage, and the new beta Cloudflare R2. And each one of these provides an S3 compatible API. So from a code perspective, it should be very little work getting your application to use one of these services instead. And there's a lot of questions that we need to ask ourselves before we start jumping over to a different service. One, would we trust a service with our data? Does the service have a reliable uptime? Are transfer speeds within an acceptable margin? Is it going to cost more? And how easy is it to set it up? And so in preparations for this episode, I had set up an account on each one of these three services. There are many more out there, but these are the three popular ones, with Cloudflare R2 being a new upcomer that I wanted to have a look at. And this is my personal opinion, but to get Wasabi up and running was by far the easiest. I just had to create an account, get my access keys, and that was pretty much it. With Backblaze, it was also fairly simple, and it could be done in just a few clicks. However, however, the main issue that I had with Backblaze was the direct uploads, and there are ways around that, but it is a little bit more involved. With Wasabi, I did not experience any issues. I was able to create my account, get the credentials, modify my config files, and uploads started working right away, as well as direct uploads. And Cloudflare R2 also worked really well. It was fairly easy to set up. There's not too many configuration options. However, I did have issues with getting the direct upload working with Cloudflare R2. And so for that reason, I really wouldn't recommend them quite yet. They are still in beta and they are still actively developing on it. But the point of Wasabi and Backblaze is that getting the direct uploads working for those two services was very simple. And so on a fresh Rails 7 application that I created using the generators from the previous two episodes, simply just so I have some Docker files I'm able to then deploy easily to a production environment. So I just use those templates. But for the overall functionality of this episode, it really shouldn't matter. So the first thing that we'll do is a bundle add the AWS SDK S3 gem. And this is going to be important because we are using an S3 compatible API for this. I'm also going to generate a scaffold. We'll just call it the pictures. And we'll give a picture a name. And I'm going to leave out the attribute for the file simply because we are going to be using active storage. We can then call the Rails active underscore storage colon install. And that'll install the migrations that we need for active storage. And for this example application, I did build it with the JS bundling and ES build and also the CSS bundling with Bootstrap. And so we can get the active storage, direct uploads working. We are going to do a yarn add the at rails forward slash active storage. And that'll add the necessary libraries that we need to get the direct upload working. In the application.js file, we'll need to import, we'll import everything as active storage. And we'll import this in from the at rails forward slash active storage. We can then call the active storage start. And just by doing that, we now have the ability to do direct uploads. In our picture model, we'll do a has one attached. 
and we'll just call this the image. We'll need to go into our views under the pictures in the form, and then we can just create some inputs for the image. Instead of a text field, this is going to be a file field. And so if we left it like this, when we submit our form, the image would upload. However, it's going to be uploaded through our Rails application. If we wanted to directly upload it to the cloud storage so it never had to come through the Rails application, then we could add a direct colon true on here, and that's all we had to do to get the direct uploads working. We will still need to take our image attribute, come into the pictures controller, down in the picture params, and we need to permit this as an allowed attribute. And so right now, if we were to deploy this, the application is by default using the local storage. We can verify that under the config folder in the storage YAML. We see that we have two different things set up. We have a test and also a local. Both of these are set for the service disk. If we go into our environments for the development environment, if we scroll down a bit, we can see that the config active storage service is set to use the local configuration. If we go to our production and scroll down a bit, we see that the active storage service is set for local as well. Well, we're going to create a new one, and typically I would call this Amazon or S3 or something. However, I'm just going to call it cloud for this example. And because we're calling it cloud, that means we need to have another key in the storage YAML file called cloud. And so I'll first work with the Wasabi one. We're going to have some kind of service on here, and we need to specify the S3 because we are using the S3 API. We then need an endpoint, and the endpoint for the Wasabi services is https forward slash forward slash s3.wasabi.sys.com. We need an access key ID, and I'm just going to get this from an environment variable just so I'm not putting it in plain text here. We also then need a secret access key, which again, we'll just make it an environment variable. We then call a region, and the region is simply where is this server located. In this case, I'm just going to set it up for the US East dash one. And then we need to get a bucket name. And I don't have a bucket name, and I also don't have the credentials yet, so we need to go ahead and set that up now on the cloud service. So I've created an account on Wasabi, and then under the buckets, I'll create a new bucket. I'll give it a bucket name, and I'll take note of that name, because we will need to reference it. And then I can select the region. And in the YAML file, I specify the US-East-1. And so we'll go ahead and select those. We'll then hit Next. I'm just going to leave these settings at the default. Next, and then we'll create the bucket. Then we can come down to the access keys. We can create a new key. We can set this for a root user or a sub user. We'll then be given our access key and then also the secret key, and both of these we would need to set up in our environment variables. And so then, back in our application, we can specify our bucket name that we used. And before we deploy this, I'm just going to go into the views of the pictures, and in the picture partial, we'll just create an image tag with a URL for the picture.image, which is the name of the attribute that we are uploading against. And we only want to display this if the picture image is attached. We can also clean up the name of our picture. We'll just add an H1 heading, and then display the picture name. And so at this point, we're pretty much ready to deploy. And in the previous two episodes, I showed how we can create this bin deploy, and it'll build out our Docker containers, and it'll deploy it with our Docker file prod and the Docker compose prod. And once our application is deployed, we then test this out, creating a new picture. We can select an image, create the picture, and then we see it uploaded. And let's create another image. This time, I'm going to open up the network tab, just so we can see what's happening. We can create our picture, and if we scroll back up, we can see a few different things happening. We have a post to our Rails application, but we didn't get the direct upload. And that's because the direct true actually needs to be direct underscore upload true. So we can redeploy this, which should only take a few moments. We'll create a new picture, test three. We'll select our image. I'll just clear the logs. Then we'll hit the create picture. We now see that we have a direct upload, which passed the pre-flight and it worked. 
And the Backblaze B2 is also very similar, where we can give it a name. I'm going to leave it as private with the default encryption. That really shouldn't matter too much for our functionality. And then we'll hit create. This will give us our bucket. And then you'll need to come down to the app keys on the left hand side. Before we do that, do take note of the bucket name and the endpoint that we're going to be using. You'll then want to either create or copy down your master key and then also the secret for the master key because we'll need to use that to authenticate with B2 because direct uploads won't work by default. Instead, you will run into a cores issue and that cores issue can be easily mitigated by using the B2 client. It is a shell client that we'll have to download, but we'll get into that in a moment. You then need to come down and create a new application key. In this application key, we're only going to allow access to our specific bucket. We'll then give the key a name, and then we'll create the key. And you'll want to take note of the key ID and the application key, because this is going to be our secret key and the key ID that we're going to use within our configuration. And so for now, I'm going to just go ahead and copy this out. I'll then comment this just so we have it there. And then I'll just create one for the Backblaze B2. If you remember, the endpoint that we had was the s3.us-west-000.backblazeb2.com. However, we are going to have to prepend this with our bucket name. So we have the example dr and then the rest of the URL. We then need to update our bucket name. And with Backblaze, I found that adding the force underscore path underscore style and setting this equal to true is needed, or at least I found it helpful when recalling the images. At this point, we can update our cloud services environment variables with the access key in the secret key, and then we should be able to deploy. And then we need to download the B2 client, and this is just a one-time initial setup that we need to do for our bucket. So I'll download the macOS client. I'll then navigate to my download folders. I need to do a chmod plus x on the B2 client, and that'll make it executable. And then we can call the B2 Darwin and then authorize account. And the authorize account will take in the master access key ID and the master secret that we set up earlier. We can then call the B2 Darwin again. We're going to call the update bucket passing in the cores rules. And then this long string will then specify our bucket name. And once we run this and we deploy our application, we can come back, create a new picture. We can select the image and then create picture. I'll open up the network tab again. We'll hit create. We see that we have the direct upload. And if we inspect the image, this time it's going to backblaze and everything worked fine. And that finally brings us to Cloudflare R2. We can create a new bucket. We can give it a bucket name, which I already have this bucket created. And then you can create the bucket. There's no other configuration options. Once that bucket's created, we can navigate in there to take a look. We can go under the settings and there you'll have the bucket URL that we'll need to take note of. And then we need to come under the manage R2 API tokens. We can create an API token. We can give it a name. We would want this token to be able to edit the files. And then you can put in any other kind of settings and then create API token. You'd want to take note of the access key ID and the secret as well, because we'll need those for our storage YAML configuration. And so again, I'm going to copy this out. We'll comment it out. We'll have our Cloudflare R2. I'll paste in the Wasabi settings because that's the most similar to what we had. You'll then need to update the endpoint and it's going to be your account ID, which is available on Cloudflare's website, r2.cloudflarestorage.com forward slash our bucket name. I'll copy this bucket name and put it down here as well. And for the region, I'm just going to set it to auto. We can save this and we can deploy the changes. And so now we can test this out again. We'll select our image. And again, I'll pull up the network tab and then we'll hit create picture. And this time we got an error. And this error is a cores issue. 
and it does need to be resolved on the Cloudflare side. However, because this is a new product, there isn't great documentation out there yet. And while there are some workarounds to get this working, I think it's a lot more complicated than it needs to be, so I'm not even going to go into that yet. If you do choose to use Cloudflare, then you may be stuck not doing the direct uploads for the time being. However, overall, there's been a lot of price comparisons and the quality comparisons between the different services, and I think each one of these are great options. There are many more services out there, and if you are into self-hosting, Minio is a great option, which is a S3 compatible API cloud storage solution that you can self-host yourself. But overall, I think you can see that just with a few tweaks on our application, we can choose our own cloud storage that we want to use. We are not limited to having to use S3, but now we have options to choose from. And from what it looks like, the pricing on Wasabi and Backblaze and Cloudflare are going to be significantly cheaper than what you may find with S3. But you will want to make sure that you do your due diligence to see if that would be the case for you or if the change would even be worth it. Well, that's all for this episode. Thanks for watching. For more videos, check out driftandruby.com.